think we're off for introduction. And uh, well, today I'm going to talk about my recent paper uh, in collaboration with UCLC uh, and last year, last March, and we have also with another paper quite soon. And well, he's a mathematician and I'm a stream theory. So this paper itself is uh, an example of the collaboration between mathematicians and physicists. It's hard to just find physics here today. And as the title shows, I'm going to talk about a curious connection uh, between two different topics. Uh, one is the hyperbolic geometry, so uh, well, the hyperbolic volume, uh, a picture of a three manifold. And another object is the gauge series. So it's, a, it's going to be some supersymmetric gauge series, and it's defined in three dimensions, in super small dimensions, and it comes with a certain amount of supersymmetry, um, and there is some non trivial duality involved in it. So this is a gauge theory uh, with some gauge coupling, churn, Simon's term, etc. And, and the interesting thing is that this theory looks completely different from uh, what's happening here. But at least certain information, like the partition functions, are captured on this one. Yeah, for temperature is for for the the is the half as compared to the input too. So they're done it because they're yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to explain that. Sure. But uh, let's see, so let me explain a little bit in more detail uh, the setup. And I said that there are two sides, that the bo both sides are uh, determined uh, by the, the same vector. The first vector is uh, sigma, uh, which is a puncture demo surface. Okay, so this is a demo surface with punctures, and sometimes well, we are going to assign a certain parameters to each puncture, but, but I'm not going to mention too much about this parameter. So basically, I have a demo surface. It's a puncture demo surface. And not only that, I want to pick up a particular element, which I like as bar five, five uh, of the elements of the mapping cluster. And from this data, I want to define uh, two different things. As I said, I want to define three n equal two series, and, uh, and also a hyperbolic three manifold. And for the first, these are very physical objects, three n equal two series, and we don't know the mathematical definition of that. Or of course, this side is more. Uh, so in order to make contact with, between these stories, of course, the nice uh, idea is to take uh, a private functor to compute a partition function uh, in these three series. Um, and so I'm going to compute a partition function of 3D angle 2 series. And, and then that's what I suggested as a relation between these series now becomes a precise mathematical equality. And it will also clear some limit is involved. So this quantity, a partition function, now it produces a hyperbolic volume of the three muscles. So this is going to be a uh, precise mathematical thing. But I think this is going to be an example. Okay, so, uh, and also for simplicity, I'm going to concentrate on the case where the lemma surface, the sigma, is just a bound puncture torus. So if this is just a bound puncture torus, uh, being a bound and bound puncture, so there is going to be just one parameter here, and, and then the mapping cross group now simply becomes SL2C. So it's a matrix, a uh, 2 by 2 matrix uh, with determinant response. And, and so this 5 is also now like just 2 by 2 matrix. So it's very concrete, just a torus. And if, if you don't like the functors, you can always forget about functors. So this is just a torus. And torus and SL2C. And from this data, I'm going to define each of these sides separately. So first, uh, let me begin with the three manifold side, the hyperbolic geometry side. And simply put, the hyperbolic three manifold is going to be uh, the mapping torus. So if you don't know the definition, here is the definition. So mapping torus is defined by this equation, or uh, another way of saying that is the torus. So there is a circle, and the lemma surface, uh, in, in this case, is torus, is fibered over the, over the circle. And if you go around the circle, uh, well, you go back to the original phrase, but then there is a non trivial action by an element of the mapping class group, which I know by five. So this is another way of representing that. So if you, if you close this interval into a circle, then that's the mapping torus. And, and, well, this is not necessarily hyperbolic, but uh, in the large, uh, well, in the, well, I can even say that generically it's hyperbolic. And it's hyperbolic when uh, this, this was a matrix, when this condition is satisfied. And in particular, it, well, I, I can go precisely and say that it admits a complete hyperbolic metric uh, with finite volume. 
Uh, and then a good quantity is that uh, the volume, the hyperbolic manifold itself. So this is a finite number, and it has a lot of interesting uh, numbers there. It means, for example. And, and also, there is a suggestion that it's natural to compressify this volume with another quantity, which is a channel time on the part. Um, and so, this combination, volume plus I channel time, is uh, the one quantity uh, which we can compute in many cases. Uh, for example, this is a high volume stream manifold. We can triangulate the right, stream manifold into, uh, the, into the ideal set of neurons. And, and this volume is going to be just the sum of the volumes for this paper here. Okay, so this is the hyperbolic manifold side. So how about gate theory side? And this side is a little bit more complicated, but let me proceed step by step. Sorry, what does yes again? The volume? Uh, what is it? Yeah, it's a child time of different. It's a certain number. And let's see. So I start with this one plus the forest. So, so it's basically a forest. And then I'm going to associate a certain uh, four dimensional of gate theory. And for physical people say that we have enough M5 brains on this Neumann surface. So if you have torus, for example, you have 4 the equal 4 series, and I take the gate group to SS2. And if you have punctures, and then there's a associated deformation, and we have the so-called 4 the equal 2 stuff series. So there is some series. Well, but this is still a 4 series, first of all. And, the, and it has 8 supercharges, whereas you want 4 supercharges. And what we're going to do is to pick up an element, pi of the SL2Z. And this SL2Z is now identified as the s duality group. So in n equal 4 series, for the n equal 4 series, there is this SL2Z transformation, uh, which is the famous quantum memory duality. And, and the, same, the same duality group exists even by we turn on this parameter. So let me pick up this element of the duality group. And then I'm going to construct a 3D n equal 2 series inside this. And it's going to be a half BTS domain wall. And for the means of the force, so I have to say, uh, this, this is known by how the complex wide gauge coupling. So it's gauge coupling and the C that wall. And then pick up this element of R5. And I can construct a certain general story where the value of how complex wide gauge coupling is out here, the bar file is out here. So they jump here. And but there is just a different description where I can apply the inverse of R5 only on the right hand side. And then, uh, well, this itself is SQR to the symmetry of the symmetry, so I can do that. And if I do this local SQR transformation, and then we have the value, the value of the complex wide gauge coupling is the same on both sides. But of course, uh, something non trivial happens here, and, and, and in particular, the uh, non trivial 3D theory lives here. So this is a 3D theory, and I'm going to denote the theory by E as you do 5. Uh, for historical reasons. Okay, so I have a Lehman surface together with an element of the Hopkin cross group, and they translated to for the n equal 2 theory, first of all, and the 3D theory inside. Well, this is a little bit abstract definition, so probably you might want to see what the data uh, is characterizing that. Well, for physicists, maybe you want the Lagrangian, and for mathematicians, maybe you want to provide some a little bit data. Uh, and another way of specifying. So, and so let me begin with the simplest case where uh, this bar phi is x, where s is a, uh, well maybe I should write, uh, s is simply a uh, 2 by 3 matrix, 1 minus 1, 0. Uh, this is a uh, matrix in SL2Z. And for this case, the 3D theory is known, uh, can be computed by, for example, gradient constructions. And it's basically SQD meaning the gauge group is U1 and two frequencies. And in Kriba diagram, it is represented in this here like this, where one, there is a circle one. And circle one means that I have a gauge group here. And uh, rock two, uh, well, there, there's a square here. And a square means that there, there's a uh, global symmetry. So this is gauge symmetry, global symmetry. And SQD U1 and two corresponds to this. So it has a very complete Lagrangian. And, and I said there, there are two flavors. So there is the obvious symmetry which rotates these flavor symmetries. And so that's the SQ2 global symmetry. That's represented by the square here. 
But actually, this is not the end of the story. Because there is a part of, well, this is still a classical Lagrangian, so which is the classical description of theory. But there is also a quantum story, which makes the story interesting. And in particular, there is another uh, symmetry, global symmetry, uh, which lies in theory quantum mechanical. So I, I represented it as a, another square, uh, two square. And you know, this looks pretty symmetric. And indeed, there is a symmetry which expanded these two symmetries. And that's the 3D, uh, that's known as the 3D mirror symmetry in the mathematics literature, uh, sorry, in the physics literature. And, but, and there is some interesting physics involved in it. But um, anyway, so this, this is the diagram uh, for X. Well, well, of course, this is a lot of particular elements. So this is the simplest example, but uh, we have to worry about more complicated examples of SL2D. And well, another example, for example, I can think of is that SDK, <coughs> where uh, P has a lot of here. So P is another simple element here. And what happens if we replace, uh, if we add this DK, is that we are going to add a transparent term uh, to this global symmetry. So what I mean is that it has a base symmetry, uh, sorry, it has a global, this two is a global symmetry. And then uh, the, you can include a top down gauge here, which passes to this global symmetry. And then you can, what I mean by this transparent term is the transparent term for that background gauge here. And, well, I think I also use this, this notation of hexagon somehow, so I'm using that notation here as well. Uh, well so this is the graphical representation of uh, SDK. And of course, we can do more. For example, what happens if we can have SDK, SDL? And then, uh, what we should do is we should first, SDK, we have first SDK, which I described already, and SDL, already, and here, and have to glue them together. And the gauge theory meaning of the grouping is that there is a global symmetry here and another global symmetry here. And we can gauge the diagonal part of the two uh, global symmetries. So here is SU2. It's actually long run two, but anyway, SU2. And this is SU2 is here, one SU2 is here. And I can gauge the diagonal part um, of, the, of the two SU2 global symmetries. And then I have such a, and then the resulting figure can be like this. And in general, if you have SDK, SDK, it's going to be a lot of long linear paper uh, with hexagons and circles uh, in, uh, one by one. So, so this is the paper. And well, so but I, I, I'm actually going to close that paper. So I said that this, this paper itself is a, it's like a well line. But I'm going to close the paper into a circle and I have a certain theory. So it, it, not, it no longer has a global symmetry, but a certain theory. Anyway, so we got a little bit of a long discussion, uh, well, discussion that um, what I said is that um, these theories, these theories are described by the chain of papers. So it has a very large like, and, and then, okay, so once you have this such a 3D animal 2 theory, and then we want to apply a factor, uh, which is the computer position function. And in particular, I'm going to compute the partition function on, so it's a 3D theory, so I'm going to use a 3 square, but, but with a slightly non-standard metric, where which preserves just u1 times u1 as a, uh, of this, uh, which rotates this x1, x2, x, x1, x2, and x3, x4. And it's parameterized by this parameter p. So it's one parameter deformation of the standard metric of 3 dimensional sphere. Okay, and then you can have a certain theory, and then you can have a twice uh, on, you, know, you can put the theory on this M3, and you have a certain positive, and you can define a positive function. Well, of course, this is still a very uh, difficult one, in a sense, because this is defined by a positive figure over both of the of the ASU, for the super of etc. So it's a very uh, complicated quantity, and I'm not sure there, well, I, I don't think there is precise mathematical formulation for that. But what says today is that, at least for certain uh, supersymmetric theories with uh, a certain amount of symmetry, supercomposed symmetry, for example, and then there exists a certain localization. And then, well, by the view of the work by publishing its collaborators, that, well, this itself is an infinite dimensional integral, but it reduces to a finite dimensional integral. 
And well, finally, in this dimension integral, meaning it's an integral over the sigma. So these are, uh, well, it's a vector, so they can be sigma 1, sigma 2, etc. And this sigma itself is just a matrix. So it's a matrix integral, and it's, over. it's just a standard matrix integral. So there is some expression, and I'm going to integrate over the matrix. And, and, and then the integrand is, uh, first of all, there is practical contribution, coming from action, as well as the boundary contribution. So these are basically like uh, determinants of Laplacian, um, but, but there is calculation from both of the fermions, which makes the story uh, simple, simple. But there is certain expression. So this is several matrix integral and well defined quantity. And, and the in, 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 important point is that once we have a Lagrangian, for example, for the 3D theory, there is a systematic algorithm to write down this matrix integral. So I previously I know, I said that for example if there, there is such a theory, it looks complicated. But once you have such a description, then there is automatic algorithm to extract the partition function. And then the result looks pretty complicated depending on the examples. And I'm not going to explain in too much detail. But uh, at least I'd like to give you a flavor uh, for the expression. So this is an example for uh, the simple space S. And then the integral is given uh, like this. And as I said, there is a classical contribution, which is somewhat trivial. So the interesting part is that there is the so-called boundary part uh, coming from the determinant of Laplacian or something like that. And it's given as a product or ratio of these functions S V. And this S V is a lot of interesting function. Uh, for the non-compact uh, quantum derivative function. And non-compact quantum derivative appears in various phrases, uh, but not only in physics, but also in mathematics. For example, with high probability clocks, and also in high probability clocks. And in particular, it says that this is quantum derivative. So it, it means that there is a parameter B, but if you take the limit where B goes to zero, it essentially reduces to classical derivative. And we know that uh, the volumes of these hyperbolic three manifolds are described by uh, the sum of the classical derivatives. So from this ex from this argument, I, th I think it's already very likely that if you take an appropriate classical limit, uh, you're going to have uh, the, uh, uh, at least a sum of classical derivatives, which is very similar to uh, the volumes of three hyperbolic three manifolds. And indeed, that's the case. That's the, that's the answer. And well, I, I call it theory because, but, because mostly this is not just a mathematical manipulation in a sense. Uh, although we use the quantum theory, et theory, etc. But this is essentially mathematical manipulation because, as, as I said, this is a well defined matrix integral, and I just take the limit. And I th the statement is that uh, I define the partition function, which is defined again from this data of the Lima suffix together with the mapping cross group. And then if I take the limit, the leading part is now given by the volume and the chance of the volume of the three manifold, where the three manifold is defined by the Lehman sample times the interval. Oh, 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 oh sorry, that's not actually. This is the mapping of total, which I defined previously. So, so this is the hyperbolic manifold size, so this is the gate theory size, and this is the, the equality of the scope. So our recent paper proves this. And physically speaking, the, 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 the reason behind this is that there should be some, since, since, since we have type of geometry, there should be some SL2R, or depending on the viewpoint, SL2C channel, that should be behind the story. So, uh, uh, and, and so, of course, this is an equality, but the question is, is there any reason for that? And the reason, is, the explanation should be that we have uh, M5 theory, M5 range, uh, which is a 62 comma 0 theory, which is not mysterious. But the story is that if you compactize it on two different manifolds, x3 times x3, and then on one side we have this supposedly gate theory side, and another side should be a chance of zero. And the majority I was talking about should be understood as an equality um, when we apply the partition function after uh, to this previous connection between these theories. And so this is the equality I was talking about. Okay. okay, and uh, so well, this is in a sense uh, can be I, I can say that this is a certain analog of the 3D uh, uh, analog of the AD iteration. In the sense that in A D C story, well you don't have to know about ADT, but, but uh, this what so called AD iteration says that the super case series in four dimensions, four dimensions, is some related to certain quantities 
in two minutes, two minutes of CPU total two. In that case, we divide six into four plus four, four plus two, and we have a quite equivalent of two quantities. But here in the story, I divide six into three plus three, and I have to bring the very similar identity. Uh, so that, that's that's possible. And, and well, I, I think that this, uh, this was a precise mathematical equality. Uh, there are some up to some caveats, etc. But basically, that's a mathematical equality. But there is a reason why it should hold. And, um, and actually, in my first paper, we, we explained why this equality should hold using the connection between the real theory and the linear series. And it's why people wrote down the connections, what is part. And, and by just collecting all these ideas in, and putting everything into a single framework, then I can say that the position function of this part should be, should be captured by this type of geometry as there to R transcendent theory. Um, so uh, that, that, that's not the reason. And actually, so this actually suggests a very interesting perspective of the feature that uh, everything involved in the previous feature, uh, namely uh, the new DBU theory, high linear theory, transcendent theory, and supersonic gate series. They have a certain cubic space, and uh, and then there is an action of the mapping transfer feature of the system. So I say a Lehman, if you have a Lehman time base, and then that determines the cubic space. But there is an also action of the mapping class group. And then the, this action of the mapping class group commutes with isomorphism between the cubic spaces. Uh, and my, what, what, what I was describing is that my equality should be follows directly from this. Uh, by a version of ADP. Okay, so let's summarize. So, uh, for the case that given a linear subject together with an element of a mapping class group, I can define two quantities, one coming from super specific A series, which is described as a matrix integral, and another is the volume of the hyperbolic variable. And uh, I said that these two quantities are related by uh, the linear okay, let's, let's. Yes, I mean, so 
there is a policy, for example. So there is a story like a super common index of all the n two theories in this partition function. But that, as you know, that in that part, the story, the parameter is now in part of the chemical potential, for example. Part of the chemical potential and all these theories reduces to uh, that information. So that's very confusing. Now the this is here, this is the information of S3, and all these theories is there like E, essentially H five. So how but then as I was just saying is that Oh, this is, uh, yeah, I mean, Okay. Can you explain the hexagon again? What do you mean by this? Sorry. The hexagon is the... Oh, hexagon means that we have a child time stamp for the gate stamp, for the background gate. The yeah, elevation between global synergy. Well, in a sense, it's still global synergy, but we are, we are adding the child time stamp for the background gate. So, in a sense, it doesn't do much, but when you want to group things together, for example, it makes things different. Because now, gro that global symmetry now becomes a gate symmetry. So, right, so it becomes a gate symmetry. Yeah, it, yeah, it becomes a gate symmetry. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so sometimes you can generalize this hyperbolic volume if you, if you don't take the limit. Yeah, yes, yes. So, then, was there already some mathematical? Yeah, so for, for example, so it should be, for, for example, I was talking about the leading compression, but for example, the subleading term here is light, right? You can introduce light mass pathogen, for example, or the three mass which is mm -hmm. there. And of course, we can talk about high order fraction, and then you, you, you have infinite number of quantities. But was there any previous proposal? But yes, uh, so for, for example, the there was certain proposal by the state someone, actually from PG6, yeah. maybe, like basically you have a saving quantum dialogue, speech satisfied with phantom identities, and you can construct a three month by the usual argument, and then, and, 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 and et cetera, et cetera. And I, I'm not, I mean, we haven't checked yet whether the quantity coming from here matches with the previous. Uh, well, what was the name of the uh, the, no, the, the, the state, state sum models. And, um, so it's, it's somewhat similar to the ISP, for example, but in a different way. Basically, we assign a certain operator uh, to each tetrahedron. And, and the operator itself is living as a function of the quantum variable. Yeah. So it, it's an extremely interesting question to I mean, check the higher order fraction, for example. And it should, be, uh, should have another interesting mathematical meaning. Thank you.